Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a golden ratio logo design all in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and you can see on screen a sketch that we're going to be working from to create our golden ratio logo. So the first thing we need to do is create the golden ratio grid. And if we just move over here somewhere and zoom in, the first thing we'll do is select the rectangle tool and just left click and create a rectangle that is 10 by 10. And as you can see, it's quite small. So we'll just use the zoom tool to zoom in nice and close. And for me, this is easiest in outline mode just because you don't have any creative properties like strokes and fills and things. So to go into outline mode you press command or control Y on your keyboard and essentially it's a wireframe of your design with no fills or strokes or any colors applied. Now the next thing to do is left click and hold where the rectangle tool is and select the ellipse tool and just left click anywhere on the artboard and again we're going to create an ellipse that is 10 by 10, which of course gives us a circle. And we can then drag these together and so that they snap in place. And if they don't snap in place, it's always a good idea to turn on your smart guides and you can do that from the view menu at the top of the screen. So now we've got these two together, we're going to drag over them and go to object group. And so they move around as one complete shape. And next we'll select this shape and then left click and drag. And as we drag, we're holding the shift and the alt key. And what this does is it will create a copy. So we should have something that looks like this. Next, we're going to select the top one and do the same again. We'll start dragging and then hold shift and alt. Shift keeps it perfectly horizontal or vertically in line. And alt, as you can see, if I take my finger off the key and then put it down, indicates on the cursor that we are going to be creating a copy. Now I'm going to scale this one up and I'm going to scale it holding shift just so it doesn't do anything funky like this and skew out of proportion. And if Illustrator is being nice, you'll see that it snaps in place right at the bottom there. If it doesn't, just zoom in all the way down here and then scale up or down holding shift just to get everything in line because that's really important when creating this. So once you've created your three circles, the next step is to drag over everything and rotate from one of the corners. And again, we're going to hold shift just so it locks that rotation to either a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle. Move this over here. And we're going to drag over this top section and again, hold alt and shift as we drag out. It snaps in place. We hold shift and we scale up from the corner and we repeat the process. So we rotate, drag over the top section, hold Alt and Shift to drag out, and then hold Shift and left click to scale up from the corner. And essentially it's just really a case of repeating this process. There we go, so you can see it's not really quite snapping there. And I just need to zoom in just to make sure it did. Ah, perfect, it did. If it doesn't snap, it will look something like this. And it's just a case of then manually doing that or holding shift and adjusting it just so everything lines up. Smart guides are amazing, but sometimes they can be a little bit fiddly when there's lots of different lines just to get everything to line up perfectly. As you can see here, I've made a right mess of this, but at least I get to show you the technique as well. So let's just snap that in place. And again, we're going to repeat. So we rotate from the corner holding shift. And it snaps in place, fantastic. Don't worry, there's not too many more of these. Then once you've created this, it's always the kind of thing that you can save as a separate document. There you go, so it's not snapping. So I'll just get as close as I can zoom in on that bottom point and then hold shift to scale up or down just so I get it lined up and then I can just hold shift again and shuffle that into place. 
I promise we're nearly done, so we'll rotate holding shift from the corner. Hold alt and shift to drag out and create that copy and then hold shift to scale up and it snaps in place. And then when you're done, just drag over everything, go to object group and we can press command or control Y to come out of outline mode and we can see we've got strokes and fills and whatnot. And I'm just going to drag over this and just remove that white fill. And we have a stroke of one point as well. So I might just bring that down just to 0 0.5. And there we go. We've essentially created our golden grid. We have all of our squares and our circles and the circles are what we're going to be focusing on using for this tutorial. Now this is all grouped together at the moment. We can drag over this, go to Object Ungroup. And then these are still grouped together as well. So we'll just ungroup again. Keep ungrouping until everything is separate. And then we can left click on this first circle, the largest one. Hold Shift. And then gradually select all of the other circles. And we'll zoom in just so we get these ones. So that's just the circles and not any of the squares or the rectangles, depending on how you look at it. And then we're going to go to Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste in Place, and hold Shift and use that right arrow key to nudge these out. So we've isolated the circles, and then we can just drag over all of these and from the Align panel at the top or on the right. We're going to select Horizontal Align Center, and vertical align center. And so now we have our golden circles and these are what we're going to be using to create our golden ratio logo. So I'm going to scale these up a little bit. If you can see this is the size of my logo. I want to make sure that they're not too small because then when I start to actually apply these to my logo, they're not going to be big enough. So essentially it doesn't matter how big these circles are or how small they are. The important thing is that when I scale them, I hold shift so it stays in proportion and doesn't do anything like this. And I don't go and start changing the size of circles just to suit me or the design or just for any reason. The important thing is the ratio from this circle to this circle to this circle to this circle and so on. So the important thing is the ratio between the different circles. So that's something that we shouldn't be changing unless you really want to and then go for it. So we will just hold shift and scale that up. So I've got a nice variety of circles that I can then use. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll grab the largest circle. And when we're dragging from our set of circles over here, think of this as a template. So we don't want to drag the master circle because we will be reusing this. So let's hold down that alt key and drag and it just keeps creating copies. So that one there's a little bit big, but we'll go to the next one, drag and hold alt. Almost. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably just bring up my circles all just a pinch. So when I grab this first one, that's pretty close to the size. And in fact, something that I'm going to do is just drag over all of these circles and go to the swatches panel, double click this black swatch, select the global option. Just so if we want to change the color at a later date, we can simply edit this global swatch and it will update that color in our document and just pick something totally outrageous, a bright red, blue, green or pink, something that really stands out. Just because what we've got here is we've got lots of grays, lots of blacks, and as you can see, it's hard to see this circle. So if we start working with this global swatch, we can see it against our design. And something I like to do as well is sometimes bring up the stroke weight as well, just so it makes it a little bit easier to see my design against all of the lines and the sketches and the anything else. Okay, so we've done our first circle. We could probably go and use one of the smaller ones for the eye, so we're dragging out holding alt. There we go, pretty good. And we'll just Use this one, probably a bit too big. So what I'm doing is just finding the most suitable size 
circle for the different elements of my logo. And just moving these into position just to get the desired look. And I think if you're designing a, a logo that you would like to work with the golden ratio, it's really important that you consider this when you're sketching, whether you're sketching on the computer or on paper. Otherwise, if you just create a logo and then try and retrofit it to work with the golden ratio, I, I think it's quite, it's quite challenging. Okay, so we're gonna go there, we've got that. And of course, you can always go into outline mode, which is Command or Control Y, if you'd like to hide all the nonsense, all the sketch and the lines and everything, and just go into that bare bones wireframe view. So we've got the beak. And we'll use this one here. And this can get a little bit chaotic having tons and tons of circles. And it's something that, at least for me, takes a little bit of practice. It does get easier and then you can start to see your design through all the chaos. But as I say, if you're going to be creating a golden ratio logo, it definitely helps to have that in mind when you first start your initial sketching process, your idea conceptualization just so you kind of have a rough idea of how your design is going to look and how it can work with the golden ratio. Right, so I think we've gone over all of the lines now. And this is the really fun part. Now what I'm going to do is just drag over these circles, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and then hold shift and use that right arrow key to nudge this over here. I'm not entirely sure what these little random bits of blue are but we're going to get rid of those just so they don't cause any problems okay so we'll work on this one if anything does go wrong we've got this as our backup so we'll drag over everything and then using the shape builder tool over here we can start to drag through the various shapes And we'll start to see our logo coming together. Now, when I drag through a shape, you can see that it combines that. So it shows exactly what is going to be combined. And when I let go, it then merges those together. If I want to knock out a shape or remove something from the selection, just hold down the Alt key. And you'll see it changes to a minus. And I can do the same and it effectively will now cut out this circle. So now the circle here, the eye, is cut out from the rest of the logo. And we can again hold Alt and do this around the edges. We can trim off all of this excess stuff and just dragging through. And I find that this is probably the most fun part because you get to really see the design coming together. And you get to see if you've made any mistakes. And at least from my experience, this part of the process is never like totally smooth. You can see here, I've got these random points over here. And if you do get anything like this, just grab that direct selection tool, drag over it and hit delete or backspace. And again, in outline mode, this is much easier as well because you don't get any kind of stroke weight hiding anything. You get that just that bare bones wireframe. So you can see here, it's not quite gone as smoothly as planned. So we'll just select that, grab that Shape Builder tool and just trim off this here. We can join the beak to the rest of the body and just zigzag and scribble over all this and include, just zoom in nice and close. I don't think that should be there, that little kind of slither. So we'll just hold Alt and remove that. There we go, if we zoom in really close, that is supposed to be included, so we'll just drag over that, make sure that's included. So it's a case of really kind of going in, fine tuning it, and just a little bit of detective work, I think, just to kind of really find any errors or anything that's not quite gone to plan. So we'll do this area here. And we're gonna have a 
slightly different color under the wing. So I think grab all of these. So that's the main body. See, if you take a little bit more time and care and you kind of check your circles and everything before going ahead, ideally these two points here would touch and it would be perfect, but this is this is a tutorial, so I'm not going to worry too much. And we've got this one here. And let's just include that as well. So you can see here we have the main body, we have this bit, which is the kind of shadow under the wing, and then we have the eye, which is cut out. So we can now come out of outline mode, command or control Y, and we're left with this. Now don't worry that the strokes are different weights. We've gone through, we've tidied everything up, and we can now drag over this, go to objects, ungroup if anything is grouped, and select each individual element, and we can start giving this some color. Now at the moment we have a stroke, but we can just swap that around and double click the color picker and just pick a color as we like. Or we can type in a six digit hex value. So we'll go FFE 937 for this lovely yellow. And of course, if I add a color behind, you can see that the eye is cut out. So this shows through. And then what we'll do is we'll select this bit, the shadow under the wing. And again, we're just going to swap that fill and stroke. Double click the color picker and go FFE 937. That's the reference for this specific color. And we can just decrease the brightness. So we've got the brightness here at 100%. We could drop that to 80 and click OK. And I think I might just adjust the hue on that ever so slightly. just so it fits a little more with the yellow. And it's just a case of really adjusting this and fine tuning it until you get to a point where you're happy. And then this is what our final design looks like. So we can drag over everything now and just go to object group and it will group all of these pieces together and there we go, we've created our golden grid, our golden circles, and ultimately our golden ratio logo. And there we go, that's how to create a golden ratio logo design in Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care, and I'll see you next time.